Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome to my Pro Tools how-to video series. This video is the second video in a series on basic automation, and this one is on automation modes. In this video, we will be covering the main automation modes, the automation window, auto match, and some automation preferences. You'll see the shortcuts that I'm using at the bottom of the screen. If you're a PC user, you can easily find a conversion from the Mac modifiers to the PC modifiers. Here are some of the useful shortcuts that we'll be using, opening up the automation window and showing the automation playlists. Well, here we are back in a session. We're gonna talk about the automation modes when you're gonna write automation either with a control surface or your on-screen GUI. So let's, uh, first thing let's talk about is, let's uh, show the automation window. Where do you go? The Windows menu. Use the shortcut Command 4 on the number pad to open up this window. So here we go. If you do not have the HD version of Pro Tools software, you just have the standard version, you will just see this top portion of this window, and that's all we're gonna talk about right now anyways. In my advanced automation videos, I will get into the functionality of these controls at the bottom of that window. So a couple important things that we need to talk about with this window in the early stages of our automation. First is the suspend button, which suspends automation globally. So basically the automation will not play back for our entire session. So still there, it just won't be playing back. And the next thing that we need to talk about is the write enable section. This section enables the seven parameters for automation or will turn off automation for a specific parameter. So this enables writing automation, for example, by grabbing the GUI fader or your control surface fader and moving it when you're in an automation mode. So if volume was off, for example, and I moved a fader in an automatable mode, it wouldn't write any automation. So that enables or disables a specific parameter from writing automation. So again, these are global parameter automation enable buttons. So we have volume, pan, mute, send volume, send pan, send mute, and plugin enable buttons. So if these are not lit up red, you're not able to write that parameter using a control surface or a GUI to grab a control. Okay, let's talk about the automation modes. See down here, if we click on the automation mode selector, we have off. Off is very simply turns off automation for that track globally. So there might be automation on that track and you see the automation that I have on screen here, but we see the fader is not moving. So it basically turns off the automation for the track. So the volume automation that we see written here is not being played back. All right, next let's go into read mode. That is quite simply automation on the track will be played back. So now we see that fader moving based on the automation, the volume automation written here. So again, that black line of that automation is just representing where that fader will be at any moment in time. So that's what that represents. So the read mode is just, again, a playback mode. It plays back the automation that we have written to a track. Okay, now we'll look at touch, latch, and write. Now the difference between these is basically how does it start writing automation and how does it stop writing automation. So let's start with touch mode. So let's put this in touch mode. Okay, so we see graphically that the automation mode selector turned white background with red type on top. Okay, we'll see how this changes in a different mode. So when we're in touch mode, we'll start playback. And the minute we touch a controller parameter that is right enabled, it will start writing automation and it will stop writing automation when we let go. And then we can touch it again later to drop back in to uh, touch mode and then let go and it stops writing automation. When it stops writing automation, it uses something called auto match to exit or stop writing automation. And we'll talk about how we adjust that, what it is and how we can use it in a little while. So we're in touch mode, so we'll return back to the beginning of this track. We'll go into play and I will grab this fader and uh, in using touch mode and we'll see me drop into uh, automation mode. Here we go. Okay, I'm riding that fader, I let go and you see it auto match out. I grab it again, make an adjustment, I let go and you see it auto match out. Grab it again, let it go and you can see those whatever crossfades out of writing automation. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
auto match. Let's undo and let's go into latch mode. So difference between latch mode and touch mode, latch mode starts writing automation in the same way when we touch a control. However, when we let go of the control, it does not stop writing automation. It does not auto match out. It continues to write that parameter's value until you either manually auto match out of automation or you stop playback. And those two things are very different and we're gonna look at those. So let's take a look at uh, writing in latch mode. So let's return back to the beginning of the session, hit return and play. And I grab the control and I let go of the control and you see how it continues to write that state until I either stop playback or I auto match. So I'm gonna stop first. So let's take a look at what happens there. I'm gonna zoom in here and we see it immediately transitioned when I stopped playback from the state that I was writing to the existing automation state at the time I stopped. So that's an immediate transition, not a nice smooth crossfade out of automation. So I wouldn't want to do that during audio unless I plan to go back and punch back in on the automation. So generally, I don't like faders jumping, so I will either go back and punch back in if I intend to write some more, or I'll auto match out. So let's look at auto matching out of automation. So here's the auto match button over here on the automation window, and it will light up the minute I start writing automation, and you'll see that the minute I touch a control, look back over there, you'll see it light back up. So I hit return and hit play. I'm gonna grab that fader. I'm gonna let go, and it continues to write that state. I'll go find the auto match button and it'll continue to write until I click on this auto match button, which I do, and you see it auto match out. We see that nice smooth transition out of writing automation. So I'll zoom in here and you can see that is the auto match time there. I'm going to slip mode so I can actually select it here. So that's the auto match time, which we can set uh, how long that is. Uh, and you see it smoothly go from where we uh, were writing automation to the existing automation. Okay, moving on to write mode. So I'm gonna hold down option and set all of these tracks to write mode. Just for a dramatic effect there, you can see all of the automation mode selectors turn to a red background with white type. Now this is intentional to let you know you're in what I call danger Will Robinson mode. Okay, now that's probably a reference that will go over most of your heads, but uh, use it there for a dramatic effect. Maybe now you'll remember this is a dangerous one that you need to be careful with whenever you're in this mode. So why is it a dangerous mode? In the other modes, nothing wrote automation or dropped into automation mode until you touched a parameter. In write mode, anything that is write enabled, and remember, we have write enable buttons up there in the automation window. Anything that is write enabled is writing automation, is writing the current state of its parameter from the moment you hit play. So whether you can see that on screen or not, it is writing automation to any automatable parameter and it's writing its current state from the minute you hit play until you stop or you auto match out. So let's take a look at this. So let's hit play. We'll start recording. You can see on the lead synth, I'm gonna grab that control and I'm gonna move it. I let go of it and then it continues to write that state. I grab it again, it continues to write that state. Look at the tracks above that. As I make movements, you can see how the electric guitar is being deleted here. It's also rewriting the keys. If it had automation like the electric guitar did, it would be deleted. I hit stop and you see how the electric guitar automation is gone. So again, whether you see the controls or not, every single parameter that is write enabled is writing the current state of that parameter at the moment that you started playback. And it's gonna write that value until you stop or auto match out. So that's why it's a dangerous mode. Everything is writing whether you're seeing it or not. So let's just do this one more time just to make sure you see what's going on. So we're now we're looking at a pan. I showed the pan control, I'm looking at the volume. Uh, let's put everything back into write mode. So hold option, go into write mode, and I'm going to hit play. So the only control I'm going to touch is this fader. So I'm grabbing the volume fader. I make a move. You see it continues to write that state. I can move it again. It continues to write that state. But you also see how the pan and the volume on the electric guitar are rewriting their state at playback. And I can grab the electric guitar, make a change, and then it continues to write that new value. So you can see how the pan control got to rewritten based on its state at the beginning of the session. And again, that's one of the issues with write mode and why you need to be careful and just know this information. So you may have noticed all the automation modes switch to auto latch. That is something that we will look at in a little bit 
when we look at a couple automation-related preferences. So let's look at a few things related to how we view automation. So we have the track view selector, first of all, where we see volume, and we can click on that and show the different track views. We have the automation lanes that we can open up with this little triangle to the bottom left of each track, and we can view additional automation lanes here. For example, I could choose all pan, and I could see both the left and the right pan controls of this track. And you can just add on as many lanes as you have automatable parameters for that track. Okay, let's look at a really cool shortcut. So let's say I was gonna write automation for this track and I put it into touch or whatever. And I wanna see that volume automation up on this track so that I can see it as I'm writing it. So I could go to the track view selector and choose volume. But if I hold down command and control and click on a parameter, its automation lane becomes the active automation lane for that track. So I can command control click on pan, left or right, and you see it jump to that parameter on the tracks track view selector. So a nice little shortcut there. Okay, one more shortcut is on a track itself, we can toggle between volume and waveform with the minus key. So this works on the selected track or the track that contains the edit selection. So it also works if you hold down option or option shift on the selected tracks or all the tracks. We'll look at another way to change the track view selector in another video. So let's go look at a couple preferences related to automation. So we'll go to the setup window and open up preferences, and then we will go to the mixing tab. Now down in the bottom right hand corner, you see auto match time. You know, this defaults to 250 milliseconds, but we can change it by clicking on the dialog box and typing in a new value anywhere from one to 5,000 milliseconds. So again, this is setting the amount of time it's gonna take. If we're in touch mode, for example, and we release a control, or if we press the auto match button, how long it takes to go from the current value of that parameter back to the existing automation. So the other thing that we need to look at is we looked at the write mode. And so up at the top on the right hand side, we see after write pass switch to. This allows us to control what automation mode Pro Tools switches to, if any, uh, after a write pass. Uh, because it is so dangerous and if we hit play again, we're writing everything again, it allows us to say, hey, after we make a write pass, go ahead and switch to latch so that I can't mess up any of the automation that I just worked so hard to write. So those are the two automation related preferences that we're going to talk about for right now. See you next time.